Music, commentary, culture, and of course, feisty feminist perspectives, women in business, and what moms are saying. I'm Joy Rose, media mom here at Mama Palooza. Join me each week on Mingle Media TV, Wednesdays at 7 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. Water is wide. I discovered in researching for this show, pretty much every other band that I found, mom rock or pop rock or whatever you want to call it, have done a version of Water is Wide. We all love the water. We love the beach. Find a beach near you. Do a little healing this summer. First, second, third wave. That's the, that's the timeline of U.S. white feminism. And so women of color have, you know, we haven't been brought into conversation much yet, but just um, like the comment on the film, the reference to Native American feminism in, um, in the U.S. I mean, there were, there were organized, very active black feminists in the 19th century in the U.S. Um, but their, their movement and their fight was, was relegated just to the racial box and to anti-slavery and to, 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 to liberation um, post-slavery. But it was very much feminist. And I also, um, I ask that question in my classes uh, when I ask, you know, raise your hand if you consider yourself a feminist. Um, for African American women particularly, who are uncomfortable with the feminist label, even though their practices and ideologies and work and struggle is very much aligned with what so much of feminism is about, is that, is that separation, uh, the separation is there because of um, the extent to which white feminism have left out women of color. Uh, in Hi, I'm Rebecca, and I have a 12-year-old son who lives with his dad. We just had a fantastic summer visit. He flew out from California to visit me in New York, but things didn't go quite as expected. In many ways, parenting from another house or even another state is no different from any other kind of parenting, because just when we think we've got it all figured out, the kids go and change on us. He is a 12-year-old boy, which is very different from an 11-year-old boy, I found. You know, usually I love for him to spend as much time with me at, at my house as possible so that he can feel the rhythm of my life and I can enjoy the feeding and the bathing, the disciplining, all the regular parent stuff that I don't often get to enjoy when he's with his dad. It's a little bit different. Uh, structured activities don't interest him as much. He likes to play video games, he likes to spend time with his friends, eat, sleep, play soccer, enjoy independence, meaning he likes to go to the store by himself. He encourages me to go out and spend time with my friends and, and leave him home alone. Um, all of this to say that uh, my fantasy of having a mom and son love fest this summer all summer long was not in the cards for us. Um, we had a fantastic visit for three weeks. Um, we had lots of games, Monopoly, Uno, we traveled to DC for 4th of July fireworks, we spent time with my sister and with friends. We had a lot of really great quality together time, watching movies, having serious conversations, but let's just say that when I gave him the choice of enrolling into summer camp here in New York or flying back early and spending the summer with his friends, there was no contest there. He's really excited to go back and, and, and spend the summer with his friends because that's what 12-year-olds like to do. I found that the key to uh, successful parenting is good communication and flexibility and I call this summer triumph on both counts. Um, we, we had a fantastic visit and I know that he appreciates that. So. Thank you for listening. I'm Rebecca. I blog at ncpcommunity.com, non-custodial parent community, also on Facebook. Thanks. What is a courageous woman? A courageous woman has learned that courage is acquired by conscious design and that you strengthen it step by step, choice by choice. She knows the ancient Chinese proverb, she who hesitates before each step spends her life on one leg. The choices that a courageous woman makes each day in her life has repercussions in how she advances her career. Her spirit is a disciplined machine that knows why it is important to take time to stop and practice daily reflection and to evaluate and apply the best resources available. 
What happens is that when doubt seeps in, she asks, do I really need this? Then, after reevaluating their path, she decides whether the sacrifice is worth the objective. If the courageous woman needs to make adjustments to her plan, she can and she does. So applying courage consciousness, she is constantly refocusing and continuing to step up. When the inner core of her strength and determination is saying, I know I can do this, then she wonders, how do I begin to overcome inertia? What is the process that I use to rekindle my spirit? And remember, Joy, that the etymology of the word courage means heart and spirit. And I always think about the famous quote, well-behaved women rarely make history. So this first step in the moral of the story is for the listener to ask, are you willing to give yourself permission to claim your courage? Oh, the water is wide, I cannot cross over, neither have I. My love and I There is a ship And she sails the sea She's loaded deep As deep can be But not so deep As the love I sink or swim.